G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. Well, the vines in the vineyard are growing beautifully. They're starting to get really long and we need to install foliage wires to keep all the foliage upright, keep them neat and tidy and out of trouble. So today in the vineyard, we're gonna be trying out three types of foliage clip, going through how to install them, the pros and the cons of each choice, running out some foliage wires. I'll be showing you how to get them up nice and tight, but not too tight. If you like this video guys, please do hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and check out extended content, blogs and more on timthompson.ag. Let's get into it. So the whole point of foliage wires is that when you lift them up, it keeps the foliage tucked away in position and keeps the vines nice and upright, allowing sunlight in, airflow and lowering disease. We run two sets of foliage wires at the end of every row. One set at about 1200 and one set at about 1500. These wires are quite sloppy and loose. They can actually hit the ground in the middle of the row during winter and you chase the foliage up with them, slowly raising them as the vine grows and keeping the vine nice and upright. If you didn't have these, the vines would sprawl everywhere. You'd end up with a lot of shade in the middle and your fruit would rot from disease. So running out the foliage wires is pretty simple. First, set your height by inserting staples in the end posts. Choose the right wire. I'm using two and a half mil medium tensile wire for this job. Gives me a little bit more spring in the wire. Run the wires out and then secure them at the end of the posts using the standard termination knot. And as always, click the link in the top of the screen to find out how to tie this knot. Don't forget, even when you're running out slack wire, always wear some safety glasses. Let's go and tension them up, and then we'll start playing around with different clips. Now, because these rows are so short, I can literally put enough tension into these foliage wires with my bare hands. If they were a little bit longer, I'd just strain to the post with a pair of strainers with the chain wrapped around the post and just pull up to the post. So I literally just pull on it and watch down the line to see how much tension I want to put in the wire. Now it just remains to do my end knot and finish off the rest. Now the first clip I'm going to be showing you today is the Vinny clip. They're an Australian made clip. You can get them with a top only clip. In this case, I'm using the top and bottom. It allows you to clip the wire below or above your point of anchorage. That's really good if you've got undulating paddocks. It also allows you to tuck the wires away if you've got tension on them in a different direction. I love this system because even if you're mechanical harvesting, the stress on your anchorage point is held in with a really tight screw. It's much less likely to come easing itself out of the post over time when the wood cracks. So these obviously require an impact driver to put them in easily. Let's go ahead and put one in now. You've got to be careful with these that you don't over compress them. I'm just going to over compress it a little bit and show you the issue that you can have. These will pancake a little bit and it will actually make the wire very difficult to get into the clip. Because you've used a screw, there's a very simple solution to that problem. Just undo it a little bit and it's fine. It'll bounce back to shape. The other alternative is to know what you're doing and don't over compress the clips as you put them in. I'm installing all of the clips today at a 250 mil spacing. Because I've got extra long posts, that's going to allow me to have up to four clips per intermediate post. So the next product that we're going to use is probably the most common clip that you'll see on trellising. And this clip is very popular because people understand staples. And this clip here works with a staple. There's a saddle in the middle of the clip and you squeeze the clip into the staple like so and it's ready to apply to the post, putting the staple in completely sideways. There are a couple of drawbacks with this clip. Staples are designed to twist. You'll see that the end of each side of the staple is cut at the opposite angle. 
they are designed to twist slightly as they go into the post. Now that's to try and hold them into the post a bit better. That does mean that you have to slightly offset this clip as you start to put it in so that it straightens up as you drive it. So there's a little bit of a knack getting used to using it. There is, as with the last Vinny clip, the same tendency to over compress this and make it very difficult to get wires in and out if you drive the staple home too tight. So you do have to leave the staple just a little bit out. As with any of these other two part clips, a good tool belt with two pockets is always a good idea to help keep the parts easily accessible. It's still a bit of a pain using these things because you do have to pre-assemble them, but they are a cheap option. And if you've got leftover staples, then you might consider them. If you get them slightly skew if, don't forget to straighten them up before you finish driving them. clip we're going to play with is called the tuckaway staple. Now the tuckaway staple is what it says it is. It's a staple that's been bent. And the idea is once it goes into the post, it's going to stand out and be a clip to hold your wire. Now there is a disadvantage with the tuckaway staple. You can't just bash it in with a hammer because you'll actually bend the part of the clip that's that's going to hold the wire. So you have to buy a special tool. The tuckaway staple fits inside the end of the last here and you then put it up against the post and hammer this end of the tool. The advantage of having a tool is that your spacing if you drive it into the post is always going to be perfect and anyone with any skill level should be able to hit the big end of this tool. Tuckaway staples are by far the most popular option in large operations because you can actually put the applicator into a pneumatic driver and you don't need a hammer at all, making them a very, very fast option indeed. Even just using the hand tool with a hammer, these clips were incredibly easy to apply and very, very fast. There is also another unsung story with the tuckaway staple, and that is if you use nets on your canopy. Using nets on plastic clips leads to them getting tangled, stuck and ripping. If you rub a net past the tuckaway staple, there's no sharp edges, nothing to catch on, it just comes straight off. Have a look at that. Perfect if you're going to be netting your vineyard or your orchard. Now having your wire nice and slack down below the cordon is really good in winter and you want to be able to have your wires slack enough to get out of the way for pruning. But there comes a problem when you try and put them up to hold the foliage in place, and that is that they're a bit too slack. So what do you do on short rows? Long rows, this is not an issue because the stretch of the wire allows for both. But in short rows, you've either got them too tight for winter or you've got them too loose for summer. So you need a way of adjusting short rows. Well, it turns out there's a couple of really simple ways that you can do this and I'll go through them now. The first and probably the easiest way of being able to adjust your foliage wires as you put them up is to install a spiral fast near an end post. To do this, all you have to do is cut the wire about a foot away from the post. That gives you the ability to tie the spiral fast off to the end. Like so. It's then really easy to wind on your spiral fast as you pull the wire nice and tight and take up any excess slack in your foliage wire. This little bit of overlap now in that wire has tightened it right up on the posts and allows the foliage to be kept in place. That little bit of extra tension makes the wire as tight as you need it to be. Come winter time, all you have to do is undo this part of the wire here, let some slack out, wind the wire back on, and it drops down back onto the ground. The other option is with a permanent wire strainer like this model from White's. Now installing your permanent wire strainer is actually really easy and these aren't a very costly piece of kit. What they allow you to do is take the adjustment bar off and unwind the tension on the wire each year. And then they allow you every spring 
to wind it back up again and increase the tension in your line giving you that option on short rows of having the wire right down on the deck for winter pruning and then having it nice and tight for springtime and summer to keep that foliage lovely and upright. Once again, you don't need to do this on long rows. I've only got short rows of about 30 metres, so I need to be able to adjust my wires. To install this permanent wire strainer is actually really easy. All I have done is tied off about a foot and a half to two feet of wire using a termination knot on the end post. We're going to bring it close to the post. We're going to slide it down through the hole to close to the post. And then we're going to bend the wire around itself like so. So we've gone through the hole once and bent around. This is the same technique that I use for putting on electric fence insulators. We then come around the wire like that and back through the same hole. Now this is where you want a bit of slack in your wire because you don't want this to kink. And the best way to stop it from kinking is to pull on it really fast with a pair of pliers through the hole. Now that we've got that through the hole, we can then bring it back around and twist it off. That's not going anywhere. Now adjusting my wires is going to be super easy. All I have to do is cut the wire I want to tension just behind where the barrel is on this permanent wire tensioner. Then insert your wire into the barrel of the wire tensioner and use a shifter to wind the tension on. This will bind the wire to the permanent wire tensioner and you've got infinite range of adjustment. Come winter time, all you have to do is adjust it just a little bit tighter, pull that bar up, and she unwinds, giving you plenty of slack so that the wire can hit the ground again. If you've got short rows and a shifter, a permanent wire strainer like this model from White's could be the answer to having perfectly upright foliage in summer. Guys, I hope this video has been enjoyable. If you did like it, please hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and head over to timthompson.ag because there are hours and hours and hours of curated content and videos on a range of topics in ag. I love doing this stuff, and I hope you've enjoyed watching. Till next time, see you later.